Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We talk everything animation here, including Sailor Moon, which we'll be getting into today. I'm Beatrice Murad, and today I'm joined by Michelle Anderer. Hello. And Steve Zeck. Hello. So, Sailor Moon is a lot of things. It is a manga, (laughs) it's two animated series, it's a live action series, and even several musicals that, depending on the decade, are very different. It's like, it's a, there's a lot of Sailor Moon in the world. Yeah, there is a lot. But, um. It's like a thing out of Shakespeare in terms of same gender playing all the characters in some of them. There, it, the the musicals are are great, but they're not for everybody. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're not for everybody. It's kind of like Shakespeare. You're either into it or you're not. <laughs> but um, but yeah. So there is a lot out there for everybody to enjoy. But today we are going to be talking about one very specific story arc within the Sailor Moon bible is that a proper way to describe it sure Um, (laughs) one chapter of the sailor moon book um every iteration of sailor moon has a version of this story with the exception of the live action series that i argue has influences of this story in them but um but yeah so this is an animation podcast so of course we're going to be talking oh yes the specific story arc is the infinity arc Forgot throwing that out there. (laughs) Um, If you haven't guessed by the title of the podcast. And this is an animation podcast, so of course we're only going to be really focusing on the two animated series that deal with this arc, Mm -hmm. Sailor Moon S and Sailor Moon Crystal. Oh, Oh, man, I read the manga for nothing. Yeah, you know, I mean, (laughs) Sailor Moon Crystal is such a faithful adaptation that there's no point in reading the manga. Have you seen Crystal? Really, there isn't. (laughs) I read, I I read, I just read, came through it, and pretty much it, Crystal in the manga is pretty much note for note. Uh, there's not really, not no differences really. Very like if there is, it's just very minor. For so. better or worse, they're the yeah. same. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you have no knowledge of Sailor Moon, this may not be the podcast for you. But if you know who Sailor Neptune and Sailor Uranus are, we're going to be breaking down the story that introduces them. Um, find out more about this podcast at OverlyAnimated.com. You can subscribe to us on iTunes at OverlyAnimated.com slash iTunes, where we appreciate your star ratings, or search for Overly Animated on your favorite podcatcher. So, guys, before we dive into this arc and how successfully each series tells the story, let me just quickly break down some, like, very basic similarities and differences of these two animes for anyone who hasn't either seen one or the other. So... Sailor Moon S came out in 1994 and was directed by Kunihiko Ikuhara, who would later go on to create Revolutionary Girl Utena, Mawaru Penguin Drum, and Yurikuma Arashi. So he's like a very, like, Mm. if you know, like, if there's one guy that's like the equivalent to Hideko Anno, I think is his name, the guy who directed Evangelion, if there's like the equivalent in like the shoujo world, it would be Ikuhara. Like, (laughs) they're the two of each genre. But yeah, so Sailor Moon S has a total of 38 episodes and basically aired for a year on TV. Um, Sailor Moon Crystal doesn't differentiate each, each season through its titles, but we're talking about its third season, similar to Sailor Moon S is the third season um, of the original anime. Um, um, there's also a, a Sailor Moon S movie too, if you want to. Yeah, but wait, that's, that's, that's a part. That has barely anything to do with the Infinity yeah. Arc, so there's no point to that one. <laughs> but, but, it's part of uh, Sailor Moon S. <laughs> it's not, I mean, it's a movie. It's the movies are very distinct. I don't yeah. consider the movie part of the, the, the anime. Yeah. It's more of just like, okay, the movies are another thing. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so Sailor Moon Crystal season three came out in 2016, has a total of 13 episodes versus the 38 episodes of Sailor Moon S. And it's directed by Chiaki Khan and isn't a TV animation, which is something that I find Re- crazy that this is a TV. <laughs> this has only ever been released like online. This is not oh, TV actually, animation. Box. No, okay. no, huh. it's actually no correction. Season three was put on TV traditionally. It's only the first two seasons or the first twenty six episode that was put up online like first. But then why is it still called an original net animation, not I an animation? Oh, I don't know. I cement is where we got that info from. But I'm just saying, <laughs> like it's. <laughs> It still carries the net yeah. animation budget because it shows. Yeah, it does. Like yeah. it shows. Um, <laughs> versus, right. Like in comparison, like if it if this season had a TV anime budget, I am appalled. But we'll <laughs> get into it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. First hot take. Yeah. First hot take. I, seriously, it's just oh god, so many thoughts. Um. All right. So 
Well, how did you guys see this? these animes? Did you see them in English, in Japanese? Um, and how much have you seen from each of them, Steve? I've seen all of them, like all versions. Well, except for maybe I haven't seen all of the Cloverway dub. I've just seen glimpses of that because i really scared to get into that. But I've seen like Sailor Moon S in Japanese and English. I got I got the Sailor Moon S DVD set from Viz, and I also got the old Clover Ray DVD set of the Sailor Moon S um, series, and I also got Sailor Moon Crystal on Blu-ray DVD. So I've seen all the versions, and I've read, and I got the manga. So I've seen everything really when it comes to this arc. Um, the funny thing is, um, it's before Viz uh, re re licensed it. You know how you know how expensive it was to get some Sailor Moon DVDs. It was super expensive. It cost me maybe four hundred dollars some for like one DVD set. Wow, that's, that's <laughs> crazy. That is, that is, yeah, that is very expensive, especially now the fact that this puts the entire <laughs> yeah. season for free online. Yeah, well, yeah I was the collecting. Fact, oh, oh, I didn't yeah, know I'm that. just an that's idiot. But know. in the early 2010s, I was collecting Sailor Moon mangas and DVDs when it's so when it was out of print in, in America, and it was very pricey. Let me tell you. And now yeah. I just got all the official stuff. Now it's you were like a year off. If you had waited a year, you would have saved so much money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um but Michelle, what about you? Have you seen what versions of these two shows have you seen? Did you see English, Japanese, um, and then how much have have you seen? I have only seen um Sailor Moon S um subbed, English subbed. That is it. I've mm-hmm. seen the whole thing, but I have not read the manga and I haven't seen Crystal at all. Though I've heard things, I've not seen it myself. Okay. It'd gotcha. be interesting. See me and Beatrice, our takes on it, and see what influences on you to see it or not. My guess yeah, we'll is, no see. matter no matter what we say, if you think it's good, you might want to see it. If you think it's bad, you might want to see it to see how bad it is. <laughs> look, 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 look. This is well, what we're going to do. how bad it gets. Look, it's look, not look. too bad. Fine. Look, the final yeah. question of the show is going to be, Michelle, are you going to watch us or not? That is, I mean, not us, <laughs> Crystal or not. Crystal? Like, that okay. is, like, that is going to be... <laughs> Steve's job is going to get you to watch it. My job is to get you to like, stay as far away from it as possible. <laughs> so, wow, okay. Well, there's much. <laughs> I mean, we're about to get into it. But um, but yeah, okay. So, this question is going to be for Steve. Well, I kind of already answered it for us, but Steve, like Steve, which version? Well, actually no. With Steve, which version S or Crystal did you like better? Yeah. Hmm, well, I don't know. I love them both just just for the record. Um it kind of depends on certain things. Um, though S is not a great example. Other seasons of the anime is a better example in terms of how they treat the villains. Because traditionally, the Sailor Moon anime, they redeem the villains more often than in the manga or aka Crystal does. Except for S, they treat the villains pretty much the same. Except for Tomome, who gets the redemption in the anime. Mm-hmm. But, and personally, I felt... In the manga, in the, you know, Crystals, he was a total creep even before the Death Busters got control of him. So I have really, I don't have much sympathy for him of all the villains. I mean, well, the villains. We'll get I into the villains, but like, okay, which one I'm did sorry. you like better? Which okay, one? Just... I'm, I'm, probably just if you want to watch a quicker, probably Crystal in terms of because I've just found the outer sense, you know, Uranus, Neptune, and I found them more likable in this version. How, how, like, they were not stubborn till the very end of working with the uh, main good guys. And and I did find, um, actually, I found, the, found the, the, the female villains more sympathetic in this version than in S. Um, and also, how? it's also... Oh, God. <laughs> also, I just, uh, All right, also, so... Uh, oh, wait, wait, let me finish. It also is more convenient to watch 13 episodes opposed to 30... Eight episodes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like more quicker, but um, but I did love the monsters of the week to have an S. Um, and, and like I said, S is my favorite of of the seasons of the original anime. Believe it or not, I, I like it much better than R than Super S. And except the only thing that might rival it is the first season because the first season is the first season. It so has definitely right, nostalgic right. Yeah. value. Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah. okay, all right, so. <laughs> Obviously, I like Dust better because it's the superior one. Um, oh. It's just, it's the better version. I, I will give you the point that it is 38 episodes and that is a commitment 
people <laughs> will not want to spend like they will not they even though they're just 24 episodes each and like technically they're like 20 cuz you can like knock out the the first like the last 2 minutes and the first 2 minutes cuz they're just the opening and ending uh yeah. sections but so I agree with you there but in every other aspect of this maybe with one or two exceptions that I'm like willing to give it because it was released in uh 94 and it was a TV animation so it had more restrictions to it it managed to do so much everything everything is better in the S like uh. Crystal is just just all of Crystal is just a uh, uh, stain well. For me, well, oh. well, I do, I do see this though. In terms of one thing, keep in mind though, the crystals is definitely is a direct adaptation of the manga written by um who's the Nanashi? Uh, can't forget the you know the female author. I keep, I can't think of her name off the top of my head. And the anime is made, directed, produced mostly by men. So you see more in, more male influence in that in the anime opposed to the crystal. Well, Crystal's first two seasons were directed by a guy. It's only oh. really the se- third season yeah, that was directed by the manga. They I'm just, again, it, and yes. that's the problem. That's like a pro- very big problem, and we'll but, get and, into it. And the anime, though, um, you see, they didn't, they can't fight more. They, 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 they they're, they're more boy crazy. All of them, they're like, they're all like Isagi. Oh, I, you mean they have personality? Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Okay. How have I, like, forgotten that in the manga, they didn't have any personality, but, I mean, and in the, more in Crystal, but we'll get into it. So, let's talk about, like, the best way to talk about these shows, this this arc, <laughs> is to talk about these characters because there's so much that happens and i don't want to talk for like three hours and break down every single story beat so we're just gonna (laughs) go through each character talk about them see what works with that character what doesn't work why that character is great why that character is forgettable and then just go into it now i'm gonna be biased and we're gonna start off with with neptune and uranus neptune and uranus are Uh, i think one of the reasons why so many people are connect with this ser- with this particular arc they're the mm. like the outer senshi in general they're like they're like fan favorites to <laughs> like a degree that it's like kind of unfair it's like basically all the adults are just like outer senshi you're my girls like you're you're it whereas like everyone who kind of was like a little bit younger was like i'm ray no i'm blue i'm i'm i mean it's just kind of like <laughs> well they're the coolest that's for them sure that's for it, sure. They're cool exactly. Stuff. They were older. They were cooler. They were the people you were just in awe of. And so you would honest, hear the oohs and ahs as they so, walked into a room. So I liked them better in Stars when it came for those, especially that first like six episode filler. Let's that focus S. on <laughs> okay. S. Let's okay. not get too far in one direction or another. Let's just stick with S. So let's talk about Neptune and Uranus. They're just, they're the iconic characters of this arc. So, um, let me just start with Michelle. Like, what, like, just help me understand what <laughs> Uranus and Neptune mean to you and why they're so fantastic. Oh, wow. Well, okay. I, I should say I didn't start watching any Sailor Moon until like the last couple years. So, like, fortunately, I had some like background of like animated shows that had like queer representation. Like, yay! But like, I can imagine, like, it still was like awesome. Like, Haruka's, like, in my top five, like, best bays, you know? She's so good. <laughs> like, oh, my God. Like, I, you hardly ever, I feel like, because, like, I think a lot of times, like, especially, like, when you have, like, queer characters and, like, you know, you're, you're projecting them to a mostly straight audience, like, they're very feminine presenting and they're, like, really cute and pretty and small. Haruka's, like, unabashedly butch and that's, like, such a nice change of pace. Like, she'll wear her boy outfits, and she'll rock her jean jacket, and she looks so good. And her voice is, like, deep and gruff, and it's just, like, the best thing ever. She's so good. Like, I fangirls over her so hard when I started watching the third season. And I I didn't know anything about the third season except that it, everyone said it was better because, like, it's, like, darker, which is yeah. true. It's, like, darker than the first two seasons. And the second season, I think, is my least favorite. And I've only seen, like, the first three. Ooh. But like, yeah, it's like it's a it's a darker show, and like I love that like 
they're kind of like edgy and older and like they're not just going to be like oh yeah friendship's the best like la la like no they really have to be won over and i like that they have like complicated like moral standings on like the things that they want to accomplish and like how that like riffs with uzaki and it's just like great they bring so much just to the show and just like having the show plot be more interesting but then his characters are also just like super fun and super gay and so into each other and just these powerful ladies and they're like the total power couple they're so (laughs) good but like especially haruka Yeah, how yeah. the best. Yeah, uh, I mean, and something cool. that and something actually that might intrigue you with Crystal or in ju- and just in the manga is that Haruka. I would say that the Haruka in the manga and in Crystal, I would give they them pronouns oh, because really? yeah, because yeah. uh, yes. they're yeah, like I just they're well, much more they're much more I guess. Ambiguous? non-binary they're non-binary yeah. really they just really oh. embrace embracing both gen they don't want to just they don't get tied down to one gender whereas in s it's straight up like me yeah, says like, no no no, no no she's oh she, i never said she was a guy like she's a like and like she it's very in the anime is more clear she she's just a, she's just a female she's a female in the uh crystals in the manga it's more she's kind of both it's... Right, yeah, like in, in yeah, that Crystal, like non-binary. like that is the one that is the one thing in Crystal that I will give them more of is that they're very much more they're more upfront with the gender mm-hmm. in that like Usagi straight up asks her like are you a girl or are you a guy and then she doesn't like she legit like gives a non answer and it's just yeah. like I mean they like they like I would feel more comfortable like even though like if i slip well, up and mention it, call crystal haruka like <laughs> she that's because i've just been calling s haruka she for forever yeah but, like they it's like i would like i would straight up call i would feel more comfortable men- like, uh, like referring them they them because uh, that's something really interesting and it's, it's ironic. really good to know that actually makes me even happier it's also kind of ironic though because in the manga uh, manga in the crystals you, at times, you see her wear fem- more feminine clothes. You see her show like more of her in the feminine features than in S, in which she is. Her clothing is mostly, like you say, butch all the time. Um, and, and I gotta be honest, I, I the first version of Sailor Moon I saw of this arc was the manga, and I gotta believe it or not, it has something to do with Nakatsuchi's drawing style. But when I first saw Haruka. I thought that was Matoki. I thought it was Matoki for a moment when I first, when the character was first introduced because when I was reading the manga, because she draws a lot of her characters similar looks. Her male characters, especially, they all sort of look similar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's funny for me if I if I saw I read it first. But yeah, there that and I think it's something that's interesting is that like Haruka's like body shape in S it doesn't vary much. In Crystal, it does, which makes oh, really? you kind of think that's like, wait, so are they like switching from like body? Like, do they have that power of switching from like body to body and just being like deciding like today, like being very fluid? Or is it like, I don't know. It's like, it's very ambiguous. So that's something that's like really interesting with Haruka is that in Whereas what like they're both great, but like there's a, like there's a very clear distinction and very interesting exploration in Crystal yeah. that I would I'm look that I'm looking at pictures now from Crystal. Yeah, their body is just like less like femininely pronounced in general, just the design, which is really yeah, that's like a choice someone made. So that's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. But um, Steve, what about you? What did, what did you what do you any like um or like uh. Well, broad thoughts, general thoughts well, okay, on okay. Neptune I, and Uranus. Well, I thought, yeah, I thought, first of all, they definitely have more realistic thought on the world in terms of you got to you know, make sacrifices and stuff. And at times I definitely sort of were sort of on their side most of the time, believe it or not, because though I did think in S especially, they were a little stubborn and I and I also felt in the, to the, to be fair, I also thought uh, Yusagi and others, they were also stubborn too in terms of none of them really wanted to maybe talk and maybe negotiate in terms of how to handle things. But I'm also t- I- I'm like, 
I'm like on their side that sometimes the world cannot be perfect. You can can't always be save everybody. And um also thought how could I they served Torchisagi in terms of older sister characters. In fact, if you remember Usagi, she's a she has no older siblings, really. All her friends are around the same age, like you know, of the other guardians. So I thought that was a nice, interesting aspect and and also the way how they Pretty much, they want to go it alone. They want to keep the others like out of it. it. Was sort of like a big sister, little sister type of relationship in terms of how the inner senti they want to prove to, to their big sisters that they are as tough as they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but also th- just because of that doesn't mean there couldn't be any romantic, uh, you know, subtext too. <laughs> oh well, well, yeah. Well, let's talk about. Let's focus just on solely the Neptune Uranus subtext first, because yeah. there's been. It that has quite a history with its like yeah. presentation, like an yeah. S. <laughs> like they, yeah. it's like Steve. Do you want to tell us? Let's like, talk about this- Clover. Wait. Oh yeah. Um, Sailor Moon. Originally, there's two dubs. You know, one like the recent one done by Viz in. Uh, I don't know when S came out. Viz, it started in 2014, and uh, Cloverweight. Originally, the original dub by Cloverweight back in the year 2000, they dubbed this this Sailor Moon S. And Uranus and Neptune, Haruka and Michiru, who had different English names, but they were, in that version, in the Clover Ray dub version, cousins. And they didn't really edit out the romantic subtext, so instead of lesbians, it's sort of (laughs) incest. Yup. (laughs) Oh, homophobic America. I saw a compilation of that, like, every time they just, like, said cousin. I was just like, these are, this is, these are be some weird cousins. I'm just saying, they're awfully close, yeah. whatever you want to call the relationship. And to be fair, though, it, this dub was made in Canada, so maybe it's also more in the, Canada, too, is more the guilty party of this. That's interesting. I did not know it was Canada. I, all this was, time, but- I had all this anger toward, like... But Ameri- it was, it's not but America. It's it an American audience. It was made mainly for American audience. Okay. It's, uh, weird thing. Just like same thing with like uh, My Little Pony. It's a weird thing. It's made in Canada, but it's for American audience mainly that they're aiming for. It's, you know. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, well, there, it, there, it's, it, I don't, I, I can't even say it's subtext. Cause even just it's it's not it's not subtext like it's yeah their text. relationship is text like they don't outright say it, but like it's there like all that banter about like oh I don't listen to this talk outside the bedroom and there's just so much like it's legit text okay. yeah all right so okay great like I feel like that's why like had it I feel like had it been subtext they wouldn't have made them cousins but because it was text they're like yeah. we we. Like, they brought more attention to it by making them cousins, but they're, I don't know. Like, it was just, I, I, thankfully, I've never come across that version of Sailor Moon. For me, oh. Sailor Moon's always been in Japanese, and it's always, for me, will be in Japanese. I know English dub actresses are work very hard to give us the best English version oh. of Sailor Moon, but sorry, I just, I, oh. Japanese uh, for me all the well, time. Well, well, well. Well, I, I, I prefer Japanese too, though I've seen the Viz dub and uh, do have certain biases towards certain characters, mainly because, uh, you know, Haruka's voice actress, the English voice actress Haruka in the Viz dub is also the English voice actress of Akko in the Witch Academia, and their voices sound so different. Well, you know, like, that would be great if I had seen Little Witch Academia dubbed, but I didn't, so I have no connection to it, so there's nothing lost, nothing gained, nothing lost. Also, one of the Witches 5 is a voice, it's the same voice of Diana Cavendish. And- okay, no more <laughs> Little Witch Academia. This is not a Little Witch Academia <laughs> podcast. But, um, okay, so there's this something really interesting that you guys have briefly touched upon with Haruka and Michiru, which is, also, well, first thing, Michiru is fantastic, and I can't believe we haven't given her enough love she either. Is she's really cool. So too. amazing. She's fierce. I, like, I love her. Yeah. Like, she's the reason. She is the reason why, like, if I'm like my ideal like partner plays a violin, like she's the reason. <laughs> she's like <laughs> she's sort of good cop of the relationship. Really, I think Haruka's like. Well, I mean, I, I no. Guess. In terms of her interactions with uh, Usagi and the others, in terms of of oh, ha- Haruka is definitely more direct. She's more harsh, and Michiru is more 
the subtle in her harshness and turns that's why I mean good cop, bad cop. Okay, well, let's talk about this kind of harshness because I feel like they have been given they the reason they're the most complex is that they're given like they're also doing something good, but mm-hmm. they're like they don't care what means by which they do the good thing they have to do. Like they will follow their duty and their duty. And I don't know, there's just this complexity in that they're like, they're the, these, it's just really funny. Cause they're like, we are these tragic heroes and we will do what no one else can do. And we're all alone. Like we're all alone. We only have each other. And then Usagi in the background, I was like, guys, hey! I can fix this. Guys, like, yeah. let me do it. Let me do the thing. Let me do the thing. And then you don't have to die. And they're like, no, 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 no. We got, th- I don't know. They're just, it's just, I love them. It's just like, there's just this darkness. That could easily also be a self parody of like Romeo and Juliet, where they're like, we need to like die in order yeah. to like do the thing. And it's that. just like, no, 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 you don't. Mm-hmm. And it's great. I love that. There, there's this darkness to them. But at the same time, the, the, the juxtaposition of their darkness with Usagi is at times pretty comical. Mm-hmm. I, especially in the span of like a 24 minute episode where it's just like darkness. And then Usagi's like, I fixed it. <laughs> And it's just yeah. like, no, it's great. I love it. And also what helps me sometimes side more with them is sometimes Usagi, especially the early season, can be such a crybaby sometimes in terms of her attitude. And so it makes me more, and maybe because I'm an adult, makes it more easier to relate to Haruka and Michiru or Neptune and Uranus' side of things. And it also, like, um, it's interesting because, see, like, we've ta- as we've, like, mm-hmm. talked about this in the uh, before and you've kind of briefly mentioned it here where you said how you d- you find like you find that in crystal haruka and michiru like they get they stand by usagi better and they're not as stubborn but i feel like that's like that's a detraction to them because their entire purpose is like we need to do our own thing we need to like we have to do what no we have to get our hands dirty and do what no one else can do like we have to save the planet even if that means that our princess will hate us and mm. then like i feel like that's so the fact that like i just find like your critique of them in s and that they're too stubborn they just they don't just become friends with usagi i feel like no, i got no problem with with them being stubborn you're saying it i think you don't see enough development in them softening up to her. And that takes a very long time, like, like towards the end when I thought there should have been a little development, just a little bit, like halfway through maybe. What just- are you talking about? They had <laughs> episodes, like there was so much development yeah. when she had no idea who they were. Like there, they, there Aww. is so much development in, in S, yeah. whereas in Crystal, there's no development. Okay, like, Crystal's maybe, just like uh, a maybe, maybe lack just, of development. Maybe just their last episode in S is the one thing that sort of left a sort of bad taste in my mouth in terms of, they wanted to fight Sailor Moon. I'm like, after the big battle, after they f- defeated Deathbusters, I'm like, okay, let's move on. I know what Sailor Moon did previously. She did maybe maybe a little reckless move. I understand why they're mad, but at the same time, um, let's just move on. The battle's over. Let's just agree, disagree. Let's move on. I'm at the very end. See, but that's interesting because that's like, Usagi at that point had lost like the will to fight. Like, she mm-hmm. was done. She was so exhausted after saving, like, after saving Hotaru and just being, like, I, like, she doesn't, wa- she didn't, like, she had yet to put the sailor, the, her sailor suit on. She just was done. And then sh- they had to fight her knowingly because I, I really, truly believe that they were, like, we need to make her fight again. Like, this, <laughs> yeah. like, not they, only. Yeah, they were, like, ready to trust her, but she, they felt like she had to prove herself. Yeah, they, not just prove herself there, but, like, prove that she can get back up after a really, really, daun- like, horrible fight that she just went through. They were, like, she just went through horrible trauma, and they were, like, you need to get back up. And their version was more, like, tough love, where everybody yeah, was, like, yeah. Usagi, you did such a great job. Like, you're, it's they're okay. Like, no, no, no. Like, they're, like, no, no fine, get up. Fine. Like they're just, and yeah. she did. She proved herself to them. I think that was so powerful in that finally and, getting her to be the person that they can kneel toward after spending yeah. thirty eight episodes showing them as these goddesses that are and, so much above everybody else. And like, that that to me, I feel I, like it was worth it. And that's an example I talked about earlier about them being sort of the big sister type of characters to them to Yasagi. 
Totally, totally. But that's what I mean. So I, I like the the I I do. It's interesting how you don't see like that. They, you think that they needed more development slash that they that they shouldn't have fought her in the end. Where like in the yeah. opposite end, I'm like, ah, oh, that to. could still happen earlier. I, I don't know. Maybe not the very end. I, I don't know. Maybe it's the timing of it. Um, I did. I, like I said though, I think they're also made their way. Um, I do like to have seen them more. To see them um, fight a little bit more in this, because there at times there were so many episodes when they just just say, "Let's see how uh, Sailor Moon and her friends handle this," and we're just gonna sit out and watch from the shadows. And well, I want to see them fight. I want to see them do their awesome like, or, like Uranus do her earth bending moves and Neptune her water bending and. I mean, I don't know if like earth earth bending to the extreme. I don't know if we'd ever get that because that's not the that like the show is always gonna. It's it's a magical girl show, so the attacks are always going to look the same. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so I feel like that's asking a little bit too much f- of the show. But um, but also like that uh, that allowed us to get because that's something that I really and this will be a good transition into the inner senshi. But we didn't get any development of the inner senshi in this, and it's by them having the time to step back and be like, let's scope out these girls. Let's see how they go, how they do things that allowed us to see them like have entire episodes of like, of Makoto, like going off and training. Cause she doesn't think she's strong enough of Ray going off and going and going to seclusion. Like the, we will, we have these singular episodes with very specific characters that in crystal we just don't get because there's only there's no time for it and because they have they were just very committed into sucking out all the life out of all the inner senshi except for usagi so it's just kind of like you know like i feel like that's a good thing that they managed to step aside because you can't have them be always the ones solving everything or else you're not going to get any development of any other character but um but let's talk about those inner senshi because they they went through like quite a journey too and i just love how the thing that they did at the end to save the world was create a shield you know mm-hmm. was like to block it all out yeah and i don't know i just think that there's something at least in s and i just think there's just something so powerful about that in that the sun she it's just like they they went from Having to protect Usagi to being like, Usagi's got this. We just got to protect everybody else. You know, I just think that there was something powerful there. But let's talk about that journey that they make in in the Infinity Arc. What did you guys think of the inner senshi? And let's throw Mamoru, Mamoru in there too, because why not? Um, mm. He. What did you guys think of them, their characterizations and, and their journey in this? Uh, Michelle? I mean, I think... Like, as a whole, I enjoyed the characters a lot this season more than previous seasons. And again, like what Steve was saying, the first season's kind of its own thing because it's, like, the first one is the first, like, you know, perspective you get of any of these characters. Um, But just, like, in terms of the characters themselves, like, going into, like, the third season, I enjoyed them a lot. And, like, I liked that the anime took so much time. And again, like, so I'm assuming Sailor Crystal had, like, significantly fewer episodes per season than the initial anime. I'm, like, glad the initial anime had as many episodes as it did. Like, some of them were kind of just like, oh, here's the monster of the week. Like, la, la, now it's defeated. More heart crystals, yay. (laughs) But, like, a lot of them did have, like, moments to shine and, like, to deal with stuff that felt, like, more earnest and darker than previous seasons. And I really appreciated having that for a lot of them. It made me care about them a lot more than I did (laughs) previously. Because there was more to care about. Because they were doing stuff. And it was higher stakes. Like, Ray yeah. dies in the first one. In the first yeah. episode of us, Ray almost dies. It's dark. And it's it's real dark. And it's yeah. just kind of like, oh, man, we never get that in Crystal. Crystal, okay. no tension. No one ever is going to die. No one ever gets super hurt. There's never, like, very big, like, you'd think... Oh, this is the mod. This is like a modern animation. So maybe we're gonna get a little bit more nuanced action. We're gonna get maybe a little bit more intense, like you know, um, visually some very striking imagery that's much more, I guess, grown up in a way. Like that's more like what you'd see in a modern animation, at least in in terms of action. And it's just we don't, and we don't see that. And there's no tension, and there's no drama, and I just. 
<laughs> the senshi. <laughs> okay, you. first episode of Crystal. Guess how the who gets that vision of the end of the world? Who gets the vision? You have is it Usagi? No, you get Usagi. You get Mamoru, and then after everything, you get Ray. Oh, what? She's what? Sh- it Why? makes no sense. You're just like, hey, this is the person who sees the future through the fire. We're going to give that power to Usagi Someone and Mamoru else. because, you know. For no reason. For no reason, just because we want Usagi and Mamoru to start us off because romance. Mm-hmm. And it's so silly. And the the Sailor Moon S does such a great job in understanding when it's not a character's moment and when it is. And yeah. Usagi cannot have every moment. They can, She cannot have every moment, even though she's a titular character. And Sailor Moon Ooh. S understood Oh, that. I got it. Diff- right. In terms of you saying the enemy, like, Usagi takes less of the backseat. In the anime, she always kills the villain. She kills the monster of the week. While in the manga slash crystals, there are times the inner century, they get to... They kill a few people. They get to kill some of the villains. And, um... They get a little moment to shine. Maybe they don't get spotlight episode per se, but they do a little bit more, in my opinion. Yeah, but b- being or- faceless and motionless and just being like, "Oh, our actions mean nothing." Like, no, like Usagi mm-hmm. still gets to destroy the big bad. That never changes, and they do get to kill some, some, um, um, well, and some villains in S. So they the- do. It's just the thing is, it's that they have like very critical things that they have to do. Like, for instance. In that finale, when they, like, walk in and they notice something's wrong before Usagi gets taken away from them, like, who are the two people who notice that something's off? It's um, it's Rei with her senses and Ami mm-hmm. with her technology. It's not Usagi suddenly being like, hold up, guys, <laughs> wait something's a minute. wrong. It's just something's like, wait, not how right. she mm. So it's just like, they're... Usagi is, like, so OP in Crystal to an extreme. Like, she's always going to be the most powerful. That's never going to be something that's taken away. But the That's fact not that what's it, interesting about her, though. Yeah, it's that yeah. she's so flawed. Like, that's exactly. the whole thing. Like, that's why the first season is just like, yup, she's really not prepared for this, but, like, it's her job, and that's why, like, everyone else is more competent, because, like, she has to rely on her friends and she can't do it alone, because she's not, she's a very flawed person. That's just, really odd that that choice was changed in Crystal. I just, like, I just, I really, like, Crystal, like, there are these, like, very, like, two-second moments where you'll have some of that humor from the original anime, some of that rapport established from mm-hmm. the original seeking, sneaking in, but it's as if, like, <laughs> it's as if the director's, uh-huh. like, it's as if these characters are so desperately trying to be charismatic like they once were, and then the director's, like, nope, nope, you can't do this, you can't be charismatic, because there's only room for Usagi and Mamoru and romance and sure we'll throw in some Neptune and uh and Uranus for some people but for the most part y'all are done y'all have nothing to do and it's so annoying it's so annoying in Crystal it's like they just don't do anything and it's it's just not oh I just really don't like Crystal okay, <laughs> so, so, uh, so um well, I but let's not- yeah well, I just, well, I just, I just think though, I, know, I think you give Crystal a little bit more credit as too. I, I think they did, they did a little bit in Crystals like uh, that, like that one episode, like uh, when they fought Yu-Gi-Oh, um, Uranus, um, Mars and Jupiter, or Ray and Makoto, they had a little bit like a little team up right there, and and I do think especially the character definitely gets a lot more to do in the manga version. It's more in world importance is Venus. She is clearly in the manga. She is the leader of the Sailor Guardians, and in, in the anime, she's just one of them. That is true. She mm. is much more of a leader in the manga and in Crystal. But the thing is, you know what would have been nice? What would have been really great if in Crystal, <laughs> she was like actually a leader and not just said, told to us that she's the leader. Because for the most part, it's just like Usagi being like, okay, now I'm going to do this. It's like, yo, <laughs> yo, like have her be the leader. Have her actually act like a leader. And then maybe I'll yeah. believe that she's the leader. <laughs> I won't take it as just like, oh, she's the leader. It's like, no, no. Like they're much more serious in Crystal. Like, they actually take their roles much more seriously. But Mm -hmm. at the same time, it's like, um, well, you're still all 14, and... Yeah, where's your silly teenage quirks? Also, like, if you're going to be serious about it, why don't you all do something? Like, why don't you... Like, you can't just, like, like, be serious, but, like, 
say something, do something. You seriousness does not mean you have no emotion. And that is the that's all it is with like with the inner senshi. It's just completely faceless interchangeable like people like what's crazy is that in crystal you could change the different you can make ami do what ray does you can make ray do what uh what makoto does and there's no uh changes into what they do there's nothing that changes Mm. because you can switch them whereas you can't do the same thing with them in sailor s like you could you can't switch them because they're the only ones who can do what they do and that is the problem with the inner sunshine crystal and Mm. Oh, well, I just prefer, well, I said one character I definitely prefer in Crystal well, in the manga, Crystal version than the anime version. I like Ray much better in Crystal in terms of her attitude towards men. I love how she's pretty much she's done with men. She pretty much not let that distract her from her her from her work or anything. And uh, she definitely and they have this little complex little relationship with her parents. I think it's kind of cool and. And also, um, there's definitely subtext in terms of romance between um, Ray and Minako in the in one in one side story in the manga. But we don't get it in the in the yeah. anime, so it doesn't. It, we don't well, get it well, in the anime, well, so I don't think it's. Like... I think there's definitely something that one adventure you definitely see a little bit of subtext with Makoto in Ray in terms of how Makoto is so like. She's the one who most cares about her birthday, so excited about her birthday. It's Ray's birthday! It's Ray's birthday! And if we feel something there, or maybe it's just me being biased in terms of always looking for some lesbian subtext. <laughs> you're not the only one. <laughs> like, they're... they're My they, goal. Exactly. Like, you're not the only one. I feel like <laughs> if there's any other two who will look for it. <laughs> um, here we are. But um, oh, let's... speaking of which, I know, I know. Later, at much of certain something I want to talk about later. Of course, I uh, talk to certain characters, but we'll get to them later. No, let's talk about them now. Let's talk about um Hotaru and let's talk about Chibi Usa. Because... Oh yeah, and um, before we begin, yeah. Michelle, you said R was your least favorite season. I'm gonna guess why a certain character might be a reason why. <laughs> I can't. Okay. I don't even. And I saw it like a couple of years ago, so it's been a while. Why did like future Usagi send her child down to hang out with her teenage self? That just like doesn't make a lot of. That one just feels I, very. Weird. One thing I don't get is why is she so, uh, at least an R trying to block, trying to be a love rival f- with her parents. Yeah, that's uh, weird. It's like that's your dad. What are like you the doing? Anti- like the anti- you won't like- exist. It's like the anti Martin McFly trying to, you know, like you, you're jeopardizing your own birth, you you, you idiot. I do okay, think well, it was like a good learning and maturing experience for Usagi to like have but, a semi little sister slash child. But I think Chibi so she's much better in this art. She's much better in S. Yeah, no, I think art. so. She's an improvement. Yeah. She's Don't, less like trying to be obnoxious to Usagi and more just being like. Oh, you're so frustrating, but I also care about you, and I'm going to help you out. And I like that side of her. Well, one thing, though, um, I'm not sure, I, I'm not sure if it's good or bad. In S, though, they made Pink Sugar Attack more of a joke than and then in the manga and crystals. I, I, I'm not sure how I feel about that, because at the same time, I think it's really funny. But at the same time, like, I don't know. I don't know, but I... I it's a funny gag, but though I don't know sure how it can get old fast. I mean, if only Chibiusa could get old fast, you know? If only she could just grow up faster <laughs> oh, and yeah. not one be a child for so child. long. Maybe no. she'd be, like, more bearable, oh, but... Yes, what the, oh, yeah, I forgot to mention, in Crystal, she is 900 years old. Same in, 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 the, in the original anime, she's 900 years old. Uh, well, it never outright mentioned, it never stated that, but... <laughs> really? I thought it was. But, okay. Oh, yeah, and also one thing I don't get in the anime in terms of at the beginning, she does not know Sailor Moon's identity. The so why she thinks you saw you had the silver crystal, it just made no sense. I mean, look, this is a show where no one else I, realizes that Sailor Moon is Usagi, so yeah. it's just kind of like, it's fine. It's okay, fine. Okay, it's like, she doesn't like, even wear a mask. You know, she doesn't even wear a mask. Her hairstyle's so noticeable. <laughs> like, yeah. it's yeah. very unique. Like, it's fine. Yeah, but, I can't um, really fall off of the place. Uh, I, I guess I guess we are getting off track talking about R. We should talk about S. Get on track. But yeah, topic. let's like let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about how much Hotaru kind of like improves the Chibiusa character because yeah. now suddenly there's something very there's Chibiusa is kind of given this very very tragic, very mm-hmm. dark, very serious ca- character 
to work 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 against. Whereas in R, it was really Usagi, right? Yeah. It's basically like yeah. her working against Usagi. You already have one like very extreme version of her, one extreme character, <laughs> right. and then another extreme yeah. character. Well, but now suddenly you have someone who will well, like who bounces her out in a really great well, way, and we I, see I, this I, very like and one, we yeah we but we see this like relationship, this friendship that just starts to blossom where suddenly she's like oh like i have to be careful with this person because she's sick i have to, like i have to deal with that 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 can that takes a toll on well, someone one, and it's just yeah. like it's just from a psych for like she's done, had to do a lot of growing up in this that uh, yeah. is just that it's all thanks to hotaru so i feel like truly like hotaru is like the best thing that happened she improved she be a by a lot but one thing i think i like crystal better in terms of improvement of the anime is that Hotaru knows their identities very early on. Well, in S, I don't think he ever really finds out. And like, I so, love that. Yeah, like, I oh, know. and S mm-hmm. is so, like, that, like, for her to just find out before, it, like, makes no sense that they were able to, like, do all the stuff they were able to do for yeah. as long. Like, she's linked to Mistress Nine. So it's like, yeah. Mistress Nine should have known. They should, like, it made no sense. Can like, I mean, it can been... talk about Mistress Nine for one quick second? Turns out we mentioned before, we talked about before how, I, and before we did this podcast, how certain things repeat itself. Like, I thought Black Lady was sort of a repeat of the first arc with the, the evil uh, tuxedo mask when he was brainwashed by the Dark Kingdom. Here, Mistress Nine and, say, Black Lady, there's a very distinction, very big difference in terms of Black Lady, she is Chibiusa. Mistress Nine is a whole different character, a whole different person who who Hotaru is sort of fighting for control of. So it's a very different thing. Mistress Nine is her own individual person. She is not Hotaru in any way, while Black Lady is Chibiusa. And I like how they did something different. They didn't just repeat things again. But you know, I didn't there is, realize yeah. that at first, but that is a that's a good point. That is true, but I mean, it is still like, oh, a good guy turns bad. It's still that, yeah. though. Essentially, There's that's like still the dilemma that. throughout the season. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, but yeah. So let's talk about how, like, I mean, as much as I want to keep talking about Chibiusa, um, let's talk about <laughs> how great Hotaru Hotaru okay. is. Like, she's like. Let, like, uh, Michelle, like, what was, like, your first, like, when you first saw, like, that whole Hotaru, like, story, undercurrent, like, that, that undercurrent of a story happening, like, what, like, walk me through what you were thinking, what your takeaway from that was. I mean, it was fascinating, and, like, to me, it kind of tied with how, like, Sailor Uranus and Sailor Neptune, like, they're, like, on their side, but also kind of, like, working like a, a little against them too like mm. the entire season and like she, her character is essentially that it, with a different spin on it and like i found her very like i loved her like i want to protect her mm. <laughs> from her other half i guess yeah but like yeah. what you were saying um also- about like um just like she used to having someone so different from her to work off of like that that's a really good point because like i i did like seeing her dynamic with chibi used to a lot like even the like her herself as a character I found compelling enough. Like, having this, like, spunky, young, really excitable friend trying to get you to go out and do stuff and, like, have a friend and not just, like, you know... It's so good and pure! And, like, I, like, was kind of surprised at the end of the season when she ends up being a baby and, like, I don't know if she was going to hang out with her because she's a baby or not. Oh, I don't like spoil this thing. Don't spoil, don't spoil. I know, but you guys read... But you have to see, like, um, future seasons. Um, you gotta read, like, read ahead in the manga or whatever to see what happens. If you, yeah, exactly. If you if you keep reading, you'll know what happens to. Well, for record, but- crystals okay. only has gotten as far as this arc, so there is no like crystals past this arc. At least not yet, though. There's going to be like a movie adaptation of the next season in in the future. But hopefully, the animation will be better for the movie. Yeah. So, um, Michelle, like, did you did you think that that Hotaru and Chibiusa, like, did you sense, like, the romantic subtext in that? Or I did you wasn't not? sure. I mean, I I kind of shipped them, because I'll ship, yeah. like, any... Oh, I shipped them. I ladies shipped them. that get along and support each other in a, a positive way. I, but I wasn't sure if that was the, like, intention of the show. Because also, because, like, Uranus and 
Like, her partner are so, like, unabashedly, yeah. like, into each other. I was like, well, there's, like, this spectrum of it. Is this, like, subtext then? Or is it just, like, I don't know. Oh, one thing you have to understand. I felt it, but I wasn't, like, sure what? if that was intentional or okay, not. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention, though, in terms of uh, subtext is that definitely um, you saw yourself while she's in a relationship with Mamaru. She definitely is definitely by. And throughout, one thing is she definitely from who gets like she brushes, brushes a lot. Brush, it is super true. Yeah, so does Jupiter. Like I see, like Jupiter blushes a lot. Like everyone's blushing over Haruka, and it made me so happy. I'm like, ah, no, uh, it's great. They all got the feels. In crystals, in crystals, like in Ray's introduction chapter, Yusagi definitely has a little crush on her. and mentions how pretty she is and stuff. Totally. So, so in well, a way, Usagi's like bisexuality is so not the yeah, question. Yeah, that's like yeah, not in question. Like, she is, yeah. but the que- but the uh, question can- is more like, um, it's more like, what do you think of that can I, subtext? Can I just finish my point and just saying it's more with it's with Chibiusa, It's like like mother, like daughter. That's fair. Yeah. I mean, I I do want to. Well, I I, I do want I I get it, like like mother, like daughter, but at the same time, also I don't. I, I think I, I want I I prefer seeing Chibiusa also as more of her own person. I, I beg to differ in terms of she's not her own person in terms of in every version, especially once you get past R, it's clear that Chibiusa has definitely a little more mature than teenage Usagi. And that's sort of a funny little gag in terms of uh how she she's a little more level headed. She's a little more level headed than Usagi can be at times. Well, no, yeah, that's what I mean. But that's why. But, but what basically, like, what I'm saying is, like, I just don't. I they. Do, it doesn't have to be like hundred percent exactly like the same in terms of how they deal with if, romance. Like, it doesn't. It, I, I get like just because. Like, basically, what I'm saying is just because Usagi has like is is intellectually shown as bisexual it doesn't necessarily mm-hmm. mean that a child of hers will also absolutely be well, bisexual. Can I just say this just for record? I like. I think Chibusa has. Way better chemistry with Hotaru than a certain other male male character that comes on later on. Beatrice, I think you know who I'm talking about. But I prefer Hotaru over this character as far as, you know, shipping with Chibi Usa. For me, it's just like TV is still like 900, but still it's nine. She's a, yeah. it's like for me, like that's the only thing that really kept me away from like the whole Taru TV thing yeah. and why like Super S for me is never really a big, very high on my list of like my ranking of the seasons because she's a child. And it's the same. I, I got that pretty same. Young. Yeah, like I still got that same creepy feeling I got when she was trying to hook up with her dad. I was just like, I don't yeah. need her to well, be so. Well, she, well, she, like, she's it's old. that same thing. And same with the Hotaru. She's like, she's, what? She's 16, 14, 14, 16, 13, 12. That's um, still like, <laughs> in young child, e- yeah. like young they child minds. That problem like, later on, kind see, of. See, but like in young child minds, like three years is a very big difference. Um, like a 12 year old is not the same as a nine year old. Like they will see each other as different beings. Like, even though, like, a 23-year-old and a 26-year-old, you don't see that big of a difference, a 12-year-old and a 15-year-old, huge yeah, difference. I get it, I and get it. And that's why, for me, I'm just like, I don't know, like, like, I don't like the romanticization of the two because Chibius is so young. Like, there's an ick mm-hmm. factor there for me, where I'm just like, don't ship a nine-year-old, guys. Like, please, she's nine. <laughs> it's same with card character Sakura. Like, it's like, don't yeah, do that. Yeah, that's a fair point. You know? Um, um, she's pretty young. So I'm pretty sure though Chibiusa, when she comes back in S, she's a little older than she was in R. All right, she's ten. Yeah. Great, <laughs> great. She's ten, guys. Well, in Japan, you know how different things are. But <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But um, but yeah. So let's talk about the one outer senshi that I don't think we've actually discussed. Pluto. Pluto makes a comeback. What did you guys? Did you guys think that um? There's different. There was enough Pluto. of her. Do you wanted more of her? Because I certainly wanted a lot more of Pluto. Um, but um, um, what yeah, you guys, Steve. I love Pluto. Um, there's a different differ here in terms of timing. Um, either it, both versions of the story, she dies and comes back. In, in in S, um, she dies at the end. In um in the manga version, she died the previous arc and she comes back here. So it's uh, kind of weird, like a time reversal here ironically saying because she is the goddess of time 
Um, I, I like the fact that Pluto, she, in this version, in this season, she gets like her own alter ego. She gets a little more personality than she had in the past, but um, she's definitely um, I see. I think she definitely seems like the oldest of all the senshi. I'm, like how I mentioned how the how Haruka and Michiru were sort of older sisters to uh, Usagi and the inner senshi. I think uh, Pluto, she's kind of the oldest sister of them all. She definitely seems the most mature. Yeah, she. I think. I think she's always been like the oldest one. At least, I mean, I feel like she's ageless. She's just been around yeah, forever because she's she's, she's, she's in charge of time, so that makes sense. Yeah. But um, um, but Michelle, what about you? Like, what do you think of like Pluto? Did you want to see more of her? Like, where does she like stack up in comparison to the other characters in this arc? Uh, I honestly didn't care about Pluto that much. I've never. I feel like Pluto like shows up every now and then, but I feel like I don't know much about her. And she's so like old and wise. Like the most like humanity I see from her is when like Chibius interacts with her and like clearly like cares about her so much and like they have a very tight bond or as tight a bond as Pluto probably has with anyone she has with Chibius. So. But, like, I don't know. I think she's just kind of a stoic figure in my mind from my recollection of her. And, like, I don't know. I don't have strong feelings, honestly. Like, I think she's fine. She seems pretty cool and powerful, and she's helpful. But, like, I don't feel like I know her that well as a character, as opposed yeah. to some of the other ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's fair. All right, so we've kind of gone through all the main senshi except for Usagi. Now, well, I mean, we kind of touched on Usagi as we were talking about everybody else. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I just, do you guys, like, what do you, what do you guys think of Usagi's, like, Usagi's arc in this? Because I feel like her arc in this, like, her motivations in this are the most interesting and complex of them all. I, I keep saying that, but, like, legit, like, by the end, all she wants to do is just save one person. She just yeah. wants to save one person, and she refuses to, like, basically she's someone with, it's like her and her morals, she refuses to kill a child. And then, it's and it's a dark thing, kill a child. Uh, Whereas you have Uranus and Neptune being like, we are going to do what you can't do, we're going to kill a yeah. child. And then if there's one thing she's going to do, it's save this <laughs> child. And it's just like... I mean, there's just the way that that finale was directed and shot and everything about it was and, incredible. But uh, what the it? journey that Usagi takes in, mm-hmm. in, in from like from the beginning to like, if you compare like this Usagi, even like in the beginning of this to the Usagi from Sailor Moon, the origin, like the first oh, season. Oh, remember I said, to, you mean like there at the end when she was ready to to just go home before they fought the Dark Kingdom? But like there is, but there is like that that one scene where she like she can't turn, like she can't uh, transform, and she just keeps smacking the floor and just being like transform, damn it, like please, tra-. like there's just this, there's this, there's this desperation in her, there's this, yeah, and it's not romanticized, you know, like the, in the first season, of course it's going to be romanticized because it's her 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 romance, her iconic romance with Mamoru, you know, it's like it's. It's like it yes, it's like tragic, it's painful for her, but it there is this kind of like air of romance there. There's this kind of like, oh yes, but this is part of like the the pain that one goes through with heartache and whatnot. Uh, Here it's just pure pain. There's no yeah. romanticization. It's just straight up like I hurt, I don't like this, this is painful, I hate, I do not, like, for the first time, I'm like, I could see her, like, not being Sailor Moon anymore. Like, coming out of this is being like, I'm done. And so, like, what did, yeah. like, Michelle, like, what did you think of, like, Usagi's character growth in this season? Like, what did you think of it and how it was dealt? <laughs> I thought it was really strong. Like, I, I feel bad. I feel like I, like, tried to wipe season two from my mind because I just, like, <laughs> I think, like, halfway through I, like, didn't care. But this season was so... I really like Usagi. I think if I was, like, 15, I would be a lot more harsh on her because I would, like, have more, like, teenage insecurities about, like, my own flaws and how they're reflected in her and how that would bother me. So I'd be, like, harsher. But now that I have some distance, um, I think... Like, I, I love that she's so, <laughs> she just, like, she she doesn't give up, like, even though 
like I like that she like is forced to reconcile and really like stand more on her own in terms of like being like no she like this is a this is a hard line she does not want to cross and she knows that she's wrong sometimes and she knows that she's dumb sometimes and like her friends like will scold her especially ray Mm -hmm. um but like this is something she won't back down on and i like that progression hand in hand with the fact that we still get usagi being like the one who like wants to be silly or like wants to eat food or like read comic books. Like that's also there, but like with this extra layer on top of it that makes it feel like the other two seasons like matter. Like she really has gone to a more intense, mature, like consequential place in her life with this duty. And I really, really appreciated that this season in particular, I think. So I think it was really well handled. I like that we got both things. I, I would have hated if she just her personality went away this season and she was just like so mature and Stoke was like, yes, I'll do it. And la la la. Like that wouldn't have felt true to her character that was established like from the get go. So Mm -hmm. it felt very believable, but also like, because she does have real flaws and she does doubt herself a lot sometimes to take such a strong stance, like meant a lot coming from Usagi specifically as a character. So I really liked it. Um, Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Steve? Oh, yeah, I admired though how she, st- her conviction, how she stuck to her guns, mm-hmm. even after it got to a point when Shiba Usa's life was pretty much in debt, gone or close to being gone. I um, mean, she could easily just like, like once that happened, once her own daughter's life was on the line, like saying, the heck with uh, saving this child. Like, after what she did to my daughter, I'm going to, if I have to kill her to save Shiba Usa, I'm going to do it. She could have easily done that, but she stuck to her guns, and you gotta admire that about Usagi. Um, I definitely respect her a lot, and and there's also, and even though um, she does, like, in the future, she just comes the queen of the world, pretty much, there's still a little bit of silliness in that, in her. Even even, even near Queen Serenity, in terms of, they did a little gag about her, her handwriting, how bad it is. And yeah, it seems as a little joke in her little letter from the future. So yeah, so they they able they able to have a character that's so like you know op as we said before, but kept her grounded enough that she's human to us. Yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> so let's talk about these characters that have been causing so much pain. Oh to yes, our main characters. let's <laughs> talk ready. about the Death Busters. <laughs> yes, um. Steve, you said that the Death Busters were much more relatable in Crystal. What uh, did you well, mean by that? Well, everyone except Tomoe. Tomoe was more of a definitely more of a creep in Crystal. In terms <laughs> of we found, found out um how like pretty much it was clear to me, in my opinion, that he was a little he's crazy even before he ran into the into the Master Pharaoh ninety and got got like. I guess demon eggs in his body or whatever. Um, he he was a little crazy before because doing these crazy experiments. Yeah. The thing though is with the uh, Calo Knight and the Witches Five. What we find out in their backstory in the in the in the manga is uh, it seemed that they were just normal humans at one point, and uh, then and then of course the uh, what's it called the Deathbusters? These aliens kind of took their bodies and pretty much. It pretty much clear that they killed them, killed their souls, pretty much took their souls away. At least Cal Knight, we saw that happen. And um, it's kind of tragic in a way in terms of they're gone. We can't bring them back to normal. Th- though I'm not sure which is five is kind of <laughs> unclear what their true backstory is. But either um, it was the same thing as with Cal Knight or they were they died. And... Um, and Tomei kind of found, like, experimented with these dead body DNA to create the Witches 5. But either way, man, especially Witches 5, they were, at one point, normal girls. Normal girls like everybody else who probably weren't evil. And I kind of feel s- bad for them. Well, in the anime, it, I don't think we get clear of their backstory. It seems like they're just jerks. They're just there. They're just, like, yeah. kind of in their lab, just doing their stuff. And by the way, um, question, um, Who's your favorite of the Witches Five in terms of? For me, it's Yuri was my favorite, maybe because she got like a lot of screen time in S. Um, though I have to admit, um, Telu maybe sort of coming and liking her a little bit more because she has a certain actress's voice. Because when I watch the Viz dub, as I mentioned earlier, <laughs> but but yeah, 
Yeah, she's not in the Telus in the Viz dub. She's the thing voice as, English, as Diana Cavendish. That's why when I watch the Viz dub, I'm like, oh my god, I just can't help but hear evil Diana. I just, <laughs> it's just weird to me. But well, what about okay? So what about you, Michelle? One, who is your favorite Deathbuster? Yeah. And two, like, what did you think of them? And even throw in Professor Tomoe in there too. Um, or Doctor Tomoy. I don't know if it's Professor or Doctor. Uh, I think it's I guess, different. Doesn't matter. I mean, I was more interested in them as villain characters than. I mean, I was really invested in some of the villains in season one, but um, I, I mean, I thought they were fine. <laughs> um. I don't know if I felt that strongly, but I mean, honestly, when I was watching season three, I was mostly there for Haruka. So I think like a lot of times when they're getting up to shenanigans trying to get Crystal Hearts, it's just kind of like, okay, now we're doing the Monster of the Week stuff. That's cool. I'll just kind of tune out a little till more character interactions happen. Um, I can just say, though, I think I definitely like Carol Knight. I thought she was definitely more interesting and more personality in actually Crystal than in the S. And I'm gonna be honest. The mm-hmm. first 13 episodes, when was Cal Knight was sort of the main villain. She was such a dull villain, especially compared to say, uh, like a villain the previous season, um, Esmeralda, who definitely had definitely a lot of personality to her. And Cal Knight was just there. And I think maybe it was intentional in terms of uh, so Haruka and Michu can kind of be more sort of antagonist in those early episodes of S. So they get more of the heat than say uh, Cal Knight. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I I mean, again, like, of course, I think that she's going to be much more interesting in Crystal because she's just there for the entire journey. And she's yeah, more, like, she has she's more, more important yeah. in Crystal, whereas in 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 S, she was just like the first of the many of the yeah. many witches. So that's what also, I, remember. I thought her relationship with Hotaru was definitely more kind of interesting in in Crystals in terms of uh, how in S, she would just she was just sort of the wicked, like, stepmom type trope character in S, or she's just a creepy little person to ha- Hotaru, and that's why Hotaru turned and like her. But in Crystals, on the surface, she seemed to try to be nice to Hotaru, or at least she tried to be civil with her. And Hotaru was like, Ugh, get away from me, try to sneer away into our family, in terms of. And that definitely felt a little sympathetic to me. I'm like, Hotaru, could, she doesn't know Carol Knight, what she really is at the time. Like, take a chill pill, calm down. I know you miss your mom, but don't have to be like that to an innocent person. Yeah, I, that that's definitely something I wish they had explored a little bit more was the whole Taru and Kyle Ka- and I relationship because that that was like ooh, like there's something there. I kind of wonder though if it's supposed to be maybe because Hotaru and Mistress Nine are like connected, and Mistress Nine and Karen Knight definitely had this rivalry going. That could be it too. That could, I could totally see that happening as well. <laughs> Um, but, uh, but yeah, but what about, like, what about, like, Hotaru's dad? Like, he is very different in both versions. Oh, yeah. What's <laughs> like, like it, in Crystal? Well, like, in Crystal, he was just, like, he was less, he was just bad to be bad. He was a he psycho. Was, oh, he was, like, he was a good. genetic, like, he was, like, a genetic, st- he was doing experiments that pushed him out of the community. That's still the same. But, like, it basically... He, when the explosion, basically, you know, like, when the explosion happens, and then you see, like, it's, you're told that, like, oh, like, he's desperately trying to save Hotaru's life, and then that's when they come, and that's mm-hmm. when that happens. Yeah. In this, he, like, was always, like, he didn't, he doesn't really show that much affection for Hotaru in the, in, in the manga. He's just, like, my experiments. Oh, and, like, right. he uses okay. her as an experiment. Yeah, she's not very And, like, he just, like, yeah, he just keeps... And it's because, like, he hit that darkness that he has that, like, that's what attracts the Death Buster uh, to him. Oh, but, like, I, okay. I prefer also, S in that. He's also, he's also more goofy in S. He's a ton more of a goofball at times, more comedic. He's a dad. He's a dad in <laughs> he's S. He's a dad. You know, like, an S, like, yeah. an S, like, I actually, I prefer, like, a, a villain who's the hero in their own story than a villain who's just a villain. Well, I yeah, so like you know so for so for me like I, him in S was just so much more of a like 
oh, he was trying to save his daughter, and then things went wrong. I still- whereas in 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 whereas in uh, Crystal, it was just like my experiments, and then there was just <laughs> evil, I'm just like, why do you want? Like, do you have like a, a god complex and that you want to be that a god? affected by like, his wife's death either? I don't think he like. He, he like he doesn't. I don't think he, he cared. Care. His wife died. Yeah, he doesn't even care. Whereas in in the previous in like an S, he does. So I just think that there is a very like there was a miss. There. Yeah. This was one of those mo- This is one like of those the, examples I, where. Like, l- let me finish. This yeah. was one of those examples where in the manga they did something and then. Chris, like S saw that and was like, you know what? We're gonna actually make this better and made it better and enhanced it and made it superior. But um, and this is one of those moments where you just you can't faithfully adapt something when you see that there is a hole, there's a weakness there, and you still faithfully adapt it. It's like that's gonna hurt you. But um, but yeah, I mean, you like the Udelia, Udel. Oh, I can't even say it, Udiaru. I can't say it without saying it in Japanese, which is not how I want to say it. But whatever. Um, She's she's my favorite. She's great. She Ooh. was like she was hilarious. She was great. She was just the way that they again. created this kind of the way they they created this kind of like office politics within the witches was just like hilarious. Just, who's your favorite again, Beatrice? I missed that. You the you the other? Oh like, yeah, she's my favorite too. And, I, uh... Like she she like the way like she's just it's just really great, and I just love how they. Like, I love how, like, the villains, like, in Crystal, you don't get that, but, like, in S, you have, like, this humor with the villains where they're just, like, yeah, there, there's comic relief to them, but they're still menacing and can still mm, kill you, and yeah. it's, like, great, and I just, I like that balance. It's very Ikuhara. There's very much, like, there's... <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah, that's, that's a good Can I admit something? I kind of have a little bit, I, I, when I was kid, I had a little crush on UDL, because I, I like the fact that she was very, she was beautiful, and she, she's very smart and intelligent. I thought she, if you take away the evil part, I think she's a very, like, like a very perfect, perfect girl, in my opinion. <laughs> That's but, a um, but, yeah. yeah, like, what, what did you guys think of, like, that, that, um, and, when... And, time I, and I really hated Mehmet for killing her, so I definitely did have some sort of little bias against her because she killed my beloved Util. Okay, but, like, what did you guys think of, um, of... Like, there is, like, this moment in... Well, there's this moment in Crystal and in the manga where each Death Buster goes up against uh, Inner Senshi. Mm -hmm. Like, like, there's one... that Each one's paired off and they have to go against each other, which is something that always happens in each season. They're always made up to go after the others. Like, go after each other. There's always one to pair off with and fight against for each Inner Senshi. Like, while while, while Usagi goes and fights the big bad. Like, I personally felt it was, like, a missed opportunity in Crystal because, like, again, because the Inner Senshi are so bland and there's just, they're, they don't do anything, there no. is no interesting, like, Character. relationship and rapport that they is created um, between each, like, Death Buster with their, uh, uh, with their, uh, what's it called? With their, uh, I, parallel in I, the Inner Senshi. Can I say something? Mm-hmm. I, I thought Villainy, um, you know, Sailor Mercury's counterpart, she was just, Blatantly, like the same as her counterpart in R. Um, basically the same character. They also had white hair and seemed to have a little like intellectual like matchup. And I thought those characters, in particular, Vilil. What's her name? Vilil. Vilil. I, I don't know. I thought I thought she was sort of a. She was just a carbon copy of the same character from um the previous arc, the Spectre sister. Um. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like there's like there's definitely this um there's just I don't know. There's just there was a lot that they could have done that in Crystal they didn't do. Um, in the manga and the Crystal they just were like, "Oh, we're not going to explore that like rivalry that one, could happen." One point, we're just not. Can I just make one point though? Um in terms of Tomoe talk about one second. I still even though maybe he's more sympathetic in essence stuff, I still think it was a bad idea to give him a baby at the end, like give him baby Hotaru like because he had a it's her dad. His brain t- I know, but he had to, <laughs> he, he was on condition to take care of a baby at this point. He needed to get some help. He he, he had amnesia and stuff. I, I don't sure if he could walk straight yet. He before. said her name. Like, he remembers her. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he doesn't remember the Death Busters, but he remembers his child. <laughs> and he cares about her. Like, yeah. like, Michelle, did you want the lesbians to steal Hotaru, or did you not? Oh, it was falling in the crystals for her. That's, can we say... Mm. 
I mean, I didn't. I did not want her to get stolen. No. But can you see, in crystal in the crystals? What happens? Hotaru is adopted by um, um, Haruka, Michiru, and uh, Setsuna, and they come yes, but with, in like, Crystal, in- like her dad dies, so yeah. in Crystal, there's no par- it's like there's no choice. But like in in S, like he's still well alive, and he's good, I guess. <laughs> and they could have like you know, so that's why it's like a lot of people are very much in favor of like they should have just kept her, and it's like no, like that's her dad. Like, don't make the lesbians kidnap people. Like, don't. <laughs> well, but, but eventually um, they do anyway. But, <laughs> but okay, so what, I, I mean, do you guys have any final thoughts about these two shows? Because, I mean, that's really it. That we pretty much talked a bit yeah. about everything. Yeah. Um, I feel kind of more happy about Sailor S and more sad about what Crystal might be. You scared? <laughs> Scared yeah, so I'm like, scared. So if I ask you, would you watch Crystal? What would your answer be? Probably not. Not anytime I soon. Succeeded. I got other shows anyway, but like <laughs> Well, if they took away a lot of the personality and they like just like Mirasagi or Reezer, but didn't like show actual reasons why and just like said because she's a leader and she doesn't have any quirks left, that's that's a reason enough to be disappointed, just objectively. So yeah, I'm not super sold. Yeah, you're missing out. Um, I'm missing out especially the end of Crystal. I think it's kind of as a good payoff, but oh, whatever. Um, I love this arc in the incarnation. It's like the thing that really sold Sailor Moon to me, especially after the, the uh, Black Moon arc, which I thought definitely had its problems. And it's definitely better than the arc that follows it, the... Uh, Black, dark, dark Black Moon Circus. No, no. What's the name? Of it? Uh, dark Dark Circus Circus Arc. The one thing about the next arc, though, they have four of my favorite characters are in it. So I'm maybe I don't hate Super S as much as everybody else because of four certain characters. But that's another point. But if you if you had to watch one arc of Sailor Moon, one season of Sailor Moon, in a weird way, check this one out. Even though you'll be skipping the introductory. It's a very important show in terms of in terms of gay lesbian type of resident representation. Uranus and Neptune are very iconic characters, very important characters that everyone should know about. And and really, um, check the story out. And if you don't mind, read the manga too. All right, and um. Uh, the last thing I will say is that Sailor Moon S is a show that enhances the manga. Okay. Sailor Moon Crystal reminds you of why the manga isn't as great as you think it is. So, oh, okay. <laughs> Sailor Moon Crystal shows you the flaws, whereas Sailor Moon S shows you the potential and the greatness of like the t- Sailor Moon Chris- Sailor Moon S takes the positives of the manga and runs with them, whereas Sailor Moon Crystal just shows, like, very much projects all the weaknesses of the manga and why sometimes, and and animes do this a lot, they will do straight up panel-to-panel faithful adaptations for mangas, and that's not always the best thing to do. Well, Um, well, sometimes... And Sailor Moon Crystal is a great example of that. Sometimes what's on the page doesn't necessarily transition as something compelling animated. Well, sometimes... And that's a great... And Crystal's just a great example of just why that... Of why that is. Well, well, Super S is an example of why sometimes that doesn't all work, work either the other way, why you differ too much from the manga can ruin a show sometimes totally totally <laughs> um there's definitely like a balance there but um Even some though, face yeah. adaptations work some um uh uh, f- uh what free room for interpretation doesn't work but i will give but in this case you got someone that really works and it's inspired by and one that's a faithful adaptation and just yeah. bombs um i just hope uh, when it's over people will watch Check out the Infinity Arc in any version. If that happens, I'm very, very happy. Yeah. If you if you if you watch if okay, well, if you watch Crystal, I will pray for you. Um well, so oh, yeah, Crystal so Crystal has the has the one oh I'm gonna forget the thing I forgot to mention. Um Crystal has extra characters. They have a 
Artemis and Luna's uh, child is in this, is in Crystals. And she's not in yes. S. And the reason why she's not in S is because she doesn't really add anything to the show. So um, <laughs> find out all the info on this podcast at OverlyAnimated.com. Join us on Discord to text chat about animation at OverlyAnimated.com slash Discord. Support us via Patreon at Patreon.com slash Animated, Overly Animated. Thanks to all our current patrons, especially our patron of the podcast, John, a.k.a. Johnny Bravo. And thanks, as always, to our Patreon executive producers, John, Ryan, Steve, Alex, Andy, and Alex, Andy, and Hugh. Thanks again for listening, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.